I want to, uh, first of all, just acknowledge, I know that you just gave them a round of applause, but my heart is going. I think that everyone who spoke and, and Rebecca who sang and Joe who created this out of thin air deserve another round of applause because they're, they're amazing. And, um, you know, my thing uh, is I don't know what's going to happen. I, I don't know what I'm going to say um, because I'm not going to say it. It's not going to be me that's talking. I just want to just start out by pointing out something that is always available to see, but we never really pay attention to it. And that's this space that's just around us. Like, it's a canvas. It's this thing that we paint on and then get excited about the painting, but we forget about the canvas that you can't paint if you don't have it, that there's a space here. And I know it sounds like an airy-fairy thing to say, but there is a legitimate space here that really actually is encoded with the answers to everything, your income, your, your life, your relationships. It's actually got everything. And so I'm going to be talking from it, but I want you to remember that any of the things that I say, you also have the availability to connect to it because it's just floating by, and whatever I don't say is going to hit you. And you have the ability to say it, or even better, live it, and actually see what it's talking about. I think about that because Joe had a moment where he was listening to silence and had this inspired idea to create this thing called Love Wave. And I was just, I know that feeling when there's an inspired idea. We have them all day, but we are so trained out of uh, listening to them. There's these first moments these little inspired ideas that just, those little quick things. Those, what if we leave this company? Or what if we go to Italy right now? Or what if we ask the person out? Or what if we let go of this? What if we write the book? That first thing, there's a little feeling that you can feel. And I know the feeling now, and I know when it's legit, because I feel expanded. I feel, exp I feel my body actually falls into itself. Because I'm going to be talking from this space tonight, you might actually notice yourself going into your body, too. Like, you might actually go into your body, because if I remembered a bunch of stuff to say, you'd have to go into your head, because I'd be in memory, because I'd be talking from my mind. But what's going to happen tonight, oh, I don't know, actually, I shouldn't declare anything that's going to happen, but what might happen, maybe not at all, maybe by declaring it, I totally have an expectation, and then we're all screwed, so never mind, <laughs> nothing, Nothing's going to happen <laughs> at all. It's very humbling for to be like, hey, here's the plan. Never mind. Don't do that. Don't have plans. I'd like to thank Radio Shack for donating the equipment tonight. That's such a great microphone. You know, let's get a bunch of powerful speakers together and not have a microphone. I think that works. Yeah, in and out. Okay, cool. Let's make it not work through most of the most amazing presentations ever. So I'm going to switch to the handheld, if that's okay. I did, that's not a knock on anyone there. I love you. Great work, great people. Source wanted this to happen for some. Source was like, hey, can we cut their mic off and on? That'll be funny. Like, oh, good one, universe. I don't get it. But like, if that's your joke, that's fun. So I'm going to use the handheld. Maybe we can turn this one right here off. Thank you so much. How about a hand for Holly, ladies and gentlemen, for getting me the microphone? Oh, my goodness. So yeah, so this space. I'll be funny eventually. I don't know that I will. Actually, that's not true. This could be totally shit. But I, can I say that? Totally? So what <laughs> I'm planning to do is, my hope is that as I keep listening to this space, that something will expand us, that we'll actually be on a different channel by the end. But maybe totally, it's like, oh, you have an expectation. That's not going to happen. Because remember, the only reason you're stressed in your life the only reason you're sad is that your expectations were broken. No human has ever broken your heart, but they broke your expectations. Try that. No one has broken your heart. You just had a belief that you were supposed to be with them longer, which is really egoic. And it just means that we were forgetting that we could be just together in this moment. I mean, everyone that we have an expectation on, we forget that if they died later today, we would go, I can't believe that I was worried about that thing. I can't believe that I gave a crap about wanting to be seen about that stupid thing or needed to fight. We would just immediately be like, could I just have another moment with that person? I don't care about any of the other stuff because we don't own each other. 
we should love each other. And I know that's the theme tonight, but that's actually a real thing. And our job is to just really get excited about the moment. I mean, every expectation we have, we should be thankful in a way that we have the ability to worry about such petty crap. We should be thankful. Our life is pretty good if you have time to come up with why things could be bad. If you can come up with ways that things could be bad, you're really living pretty well. Do you get what I'm saying? Like, life is pretty good if you can create a problem out of thin air and go, man, what if this happens? What if they don't like me? There's people that want water in other areas, and we're like, what if they don't like me? Right? Who gives a crap if they like you? And guess what? When we leap, sometimes we go, I left, and then I didn't make any money, Kyle. I've heard that a lot. I left, Most of my clients are totally broke now. But, <laughs> but, <laughs> but when you leap, you're forgetting something. When you leap... You're going, I'm expecting to get this. That's not a leap. Okay, I'm going to go after the thing, and I bet I make money because I do it. I left, and then I didn't make any money. Huh, that wasn't a leap. That was a condition. You didn't leap. That was a condition. Okay, I'm going to do this. I trust you, and it's going, you trust me? Cool. Let's make you broke so that you can see that you're loved without it, so you'll stop worrying about money and become holy shit amazing. It'll give you what you need. Life will totally give you what you need. It doesn't care about what you want. And a leap is scary because things happen that you weren't expecting. So when people leap and go, I have an expectation that this leap will go this certain way, it's going, I'm going to demolish that control system that thinks that things should go a certain way because that's how actual surrender works. So the way that this talk works is just by starting and bringing love, and being love, and really doing that cliche thing that you've heard all day, loving myself, but that's not a thing that you can egoically do. That's what you are. Love is actually what you are, and everything else is just a bizarre distraction, and it's a movie that you're watching, because it's such a good movie. Like, it's such a fun movie. You get to go into a movie. Like, isn't it weird we go on Netflix and we actually watch conflict for two hours? Like, I gotta click on and watch a problem and then watch them overcome the problem they created for two hours. Oh, I had such a stressful day. I'm so tired of working and oh, everything sucks. I have to go watch a bunch of people play a bunch of other people and have them simulate a problem that they overcome because my life is so freaking good that I have time to watch simulated problems. That's what a movie is. I got to watch it because there's very few movies that just expand your heart, like The Karate Kid and one other that sucks. That's it. Every spiritual movie's horribly made, and then everything that's good is just killing and then getting their shit back at the end. Like, who cares? You got enough drama going on in you. There is such a great movie going on in you, and if you watch it, it will actually heal itself and resolve itself so much. I was sitting in this room yesterday and I was just listening to silence for hours and hours and I just thought to myself, there is so much going on in this room. It was totally silent. There is so much going on in this room. And usually when we sit in a room alone, we get so stressed that we're not fixing or joining or, you know, changing something outside of the room. We are mad. So we need to walk, turn on the TV and watch a simulation of shit going on outside of the room. But we don't realize that what's in the room also is really important. Like there's more noise in the silence than in the noise. There is so much you that needs to be seen. And I swear to God, it's a cliche too, but I actually mean this. If you actually, I say actually because people hear that and everyone goes, yeah, I get it, meditate. Hmm, I get it. I know about meditation. People say this. Yeah, I know what meditation is. It's good. Meditation is the only thing that we think we do every day just by saying, I once did it. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like people say, yeah, I get it, meditation. Totally. I know about meditation. I did it like six years ago. A guy came to our work and taught us to meditate for 20 minutes. So... I'm good. That's like, hey, dude, you should work out. Oh, yeah, I know, I know what recess is. We had that in school. It was really cool. We'd play on the slides and stuff, but I'm still fat, so it doesn't work. Dude, you're bleeding. Oh, hospitals? Yeah, I know what that is. I've already, I've heard, I saw a hospital on TV once. There's a show called General Hospital. Dude, you're bleeding. We need to take you to a hospital right now. Yeah, I know what a hospital is. They're really cool. I get it. Sounds really fun. I had one a while ago, so I don't need to go. Dude, you need to go on a vacation. Airports? Oh, I totally know what an airport is. I don't need to go on a vacation. You get what I'm saying? There's a difference between actually doing it and coming up with these bizarre, stupid sentences 
that stop us from actually doing it. Because you could also always be meditating. You could also always be listening to silence. You could also very frequently be doing that. And the more you hear content like this, the more you're expanding yourself. So if you are expanding your awareness and then you do lower vibration stuff, you are going to get so sad. Because the gap between what you know exists and where you're living is so big. That's where all your pain is, in that gap. See, some people have a very low awareness. And I don't mean that with judgment. It's just some people are like, are my Cheetos here? Oh, good. The end. That's good. I got Cheetos. I'm thrilled I have Cheetos. That's all I need to be happy. A bunch of Cheetos. Did the football team win? Did this group of men, not really from this city, beat another group of men, not from this city? Okay, good. I'm happy temporarily and then really depressed for the year until they win again, hopefully. Did those things happen? I'm happy. That's one level of awareness. But then the more you actually realize there's a space here, the more your intellect, your mind, and everything understands there's this place outside of the matrix. So your job is to acclimate through what you do to this space. If you don't, you're going to be really depressed. I find some of the most depressed people are the most inventive, creative, brilliant people. But they're living, they're college students living in third grade. You get what I'm saying? Emotionally, they're, they're college students. Imagine if you built your body up and you could suddenly lift 300 pounds, but then you go to a place where everyone's lifting 25 pounds. You get so depressed and you'd start to lose your muscles and you'd feel like you're less and less and less and you'd feel like you're not growing. So everything would fall apart. See, we actually have to start to choose just at a higher percentage of each day to live in that deepest place. Just live where you know the highest is. Now the weird thing is, I already know from working with so many people, and almost everyone who spoke had not necessarily, many of them have, but not everybody had been a long time speaker, but I could feel the vibration of people talking from their hearts. So I really believe at our core, we're all natural speakers. We're all natural authors. We're all so good. And most people create a mental belief that they're not that good because they don't have this experience and blah, 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 blah. Well, I know some speakers, and I'm not knocking anyone, but I know some speakers who have a lot of training in speaking, but don't have this. And I take this, I take this, this is what I want. And this can form an amazing speaker or author or whatever your journey is. So I get excited about people, and all you gotta do is live on what you know the highest is. Yes, it's scary, but it's scary to the BS old story that's wanting to hold on to the old thing. And it's going to keep being scary until you finally do it. So our job is to just say yes to the highest thing. And that highest thing isn't even a leap. If you feel a highest idea, you are suddenly available on the channel where it hit you. So it's not a leap, it's just you finally created a receptivity to the grade of that amazing thing. Are you with me so far? Am I doing too many words? with very shitty vocabulary. A lot of words with shitty vocabulary, that's me. Way too many words, but I don't say any word bigger than like scrampulent, which isn't even a word. <laughs> so there's this space, and I'm telling you, I've been meditating for four years, two hours a day almost, over and over and over, so many millions of different amazing ideas have come through. Massive things have happened. All kinds of things have birthed. And still, there's so much pain I get to work through. Like, we're never there. But the more you do this work, the more you get to feel what that is. And let me give you an example. Two nights ago, my dear friend who's in the back, Michael Fishman, created an event called Consumer Health Summit. They just had their 20th anniversary. And of course, because I left and said to Joe, I'll do your event for free, all of a sudden another gig showed up in Phoenix right before it. So I actually suddenly had a lot of work. And then Dave Asprey was there from Bulletproof and he had me on his podcast, which is going to be coming out when my book comes out. So all that showed up because I was in the yes vibration to Phoenix. And Joe doesn't know this, but the reason I took this gig is because also May 4th would have been my mom's birthday. 
So I love her, and this is a real thing, and I miss my mom so much. She also passed away in May, May 31st, and Mother's Day is May. Everything's May, so it's just my heart is wide open, and I miss her so much, and I know she's here, which is so depressing for her, because there's so much better stuff. She, do I have to watch him again? I don't want to watch him. And I'm just like, look at me now. Do you like me now? Yes! Can I please go wings and fly or whatever angels do? She's here, and I feel sorry for her now because I get that she approves of me. And mom, wherever you are, you don't have to watch this. You could have left right after Kitten was done. But she's here. I know it. And I'm sorry. Because I, right after my mom died, my daughter was born. And I learned how much my mom loved me by looking at my daughter. I wasn't going, Vivi, if you only got on Jimmy Kimmel Live, I would start to like you the way I believed my mom worked, right? But I took this event because Joe felt an inspired idea, which means that if he says yes to it, the consciousness of the world will change. That's how inspired ideas work. When you have an idea show up, it expands your body. And usually, as I've told before on different stages, the yeah but shows up. The yeah, but's the old story, and the idea is the new story. And I have had enough experience to when Joe said, I have this high idea, I'm on the other side and batting a thousand percent at knowing every time you have an expansive idea and you say yes to it, you actually will shift the way you see life. You will release your attachment to old stories. You will move into a new confidence because you actually ascended and you'll create an ability to receive on a higher level so way better things can come into your life. But also, who cares? Because the number one thing is you're much more connected to source. I felt the way he was talking about it, that it was a source connecting thing. So when he said yes, I needed to support it. There's no way because the universe said we need to do this event. Who knows what is going to birth out of you guys from this event? If you take one sentence from this entire day and apply it later, everything shifts. One sentence. If you have one sentence that hit you, one thing that changes something, if one of you lets go of something heavy, one of you cleans out the garage, one of you forgives someone, this whole thing was worth it because you just created a ripple effect down your family line and all these other ways that we can't see. So when Joe said that, usually I have a good fee for doing a talk, but when Joe said that, I was like, I have to because I see it's a vibrational thing. And I'm daring you to support people that you can feel are on the precipice of an expansion that's beyond the story of what they think they are, more than the people that are codependently trying to stay small around you, right? Because there are some people that just want to keep taking from you, and you can feel that might be nice, but some people, if you get the way I'm saying it, their growth could be for you to stop because they need to stop being a taking caterpillar and fall over so they go into the cocoon and become a butterfly. But then there's some people that are butterflies that are looking at people that are wanting to be butterflies. And I know Joe went through hell. He went through what Nicole beautifully called the solar coaster. Joe went through hell creating this event. That was his old story falling off. It's always, he's accessing his old story. And it's leaving. And we forget when we feel pain in our body that it's trying to get through the dirt and hit oil. So we immediately have trained ourselves, the second we feel a little bit uncomfortable, to get into our heads and come up with a solution so we can stay in third grade. And your body's trying so hard to get you into fourth grade. And then we go, oh, I know, I'll do it this way. And if you're really good at achieving things, you can achieve your way out of going down there and continually addictive your way out of this thing. So when Joe leapt, I was like, I'm in. And then a lot of people were in. And this is actually an event. I thought we were going to be like next to a dumpster or something. Like, this is really good. This is like a big, legitimate event. Now, Joe has left, but he's vibrationally changed. I don't even know if he's in the hole financially on this, but he's in his heart so much more. And that is worth so much more than whatever the short-term financial thing was for this. He's in his heart so much more. He has a new confidence. He has all these things he didn't know he was going to get, like Michael Fishman is here and his amazing girlfriend, Elaine. They came to this event because our event was done, and he booked like he booked this event with me and all these people, Vish and Lonky and, and uh, Dave Asprey, and, and who created Bulletproof, and 
and Joe Polish, all these speakers, and we've just become family, so they just came. Now, they're friends. What's coming out of that? That was in the leap. He didn't know that. At first, it was just, should I do the event? You don't know when you have a leap. Now he's friends with them. And who knows what Michael could bring to him or any of you could bring to Joe. He doesn't know. He made himself receptive. You all showed up. Every inspired idea you have is including a ton of crap that you can't see when you say yes to it. Every single inspired idea. It contains everything. But your mind can only measure what you will lose. It can't see what you'll gain. Right? That's my old... Thank you. That's one of my bellwether quotes that's made me very successful, but that's true. When you let go of something heavy, your mind can measure what you will lose and you can't see what you'll gain. Why are we going with the mind and not feeling in the body? Screw what the mind's thinking. Just feel the mind freak out, but feel the expansion in your body. You will never have expansion in your body without the match of the mind freaking out. It's never happened where you feel called to do something and fear not show up. Right? And whatever thing you say yes to becomes your reality. Fear goes, yeah, but we might lose money. And then you go, nah, I'm going to pass. And then you become, ah, I'm more trained into being worried about losing money. Universe goes, that's what you want? Because remember, the universe moves based on how you move, not based on what you say. There are people that say universe and God all the time and don't live in congruence with faith. They say they wait for signs. But the signs are also inside. I had a woman once say to me, I'm, well, I'm wanting to divorce my husband, but I'm waiting for a sign. So the fact you want to divorce him is the sign. <laughs> Don't wait till you drive by Divorce Your Husband Avenue. <laughs> and even then you'll go, that's probably not for me. <laughs> you, you know how many times we pick and choose signs as actually a way to not do the universal calling. I had a woman once say to me, I called her to come to my event. I said, are you coming to my event? And she goes, I was going to, but I was trying to sign up and my computer crashed, so I think that's a sign that I shouldn't. I said, how is me not calling you a sign that you should? <laughs> like, I'm calling you. Are you overlooking this sign? And then finally I said, what do you want? And she goes, I want to come, but, and I go, stop. And it wasn't just because I wanted her to come to my event. It's I want to, but. Every time you honor the but, you become the but. Oh, that was cool. But you become the but. When you honor the yeah, but, it's just, you just energetically said to the universe, I don't want what you have for me. And it actually is a real legit thing. So two days ago, I'm doing Michael Fishman's amazing event, and I was not feeling in the pocket. And that's why I was saying, no matter how far you go, this shit keeps coming, right? But I've trained myself enough to learn to be with the pain. And this last month, I've been with it a ton. And it's been a massive, amazing experience. And I said a joke to Dave Asprey. I was making fun of everyone in the room, and I looked at Dave Asprey, and I said, I said, Dave Asprey from Bulletproof's here. And I said, uh, he, uh, I said, he was showing me pictures of his kids and they had butter on their head. And I was like, I think we're overdoing this, Dave. <laughs> it was a silly joke. But a minute later, Dave Asprey got up and left. And he got up, I, and well, first I'll just tell you, it was in my body. Like, I went back to my room like, is Dave Asprey mad at me? So there was a me, do you know about this part, that wants to text and check? Do you get what I'm talking about? That little, like, I'm feeling trauma in my body that I think this person's upset with me. So every part of me wanted to text and check with him. Hey, I hope you didn't mind me saying that. I could see a pattern kicking in. And if I had followed through on texting and checking with him, I wouldn't have been able to feel this pain because that showed me all of the people and things that I'm trying to fix and make sure are okay. I mean, there are so many people that we know now because of social media, there's always someone you're, you can be upset as a, as, or you can be wondering if they're upset with you. You can just shake someone's hand and they leave quick and you're like, shit, did I do that okay? And you're like, worried. 
But we only have 24 hours a day, and we can always go, is someone upset with me? Now, you might not have that, but you might have some other thing where you go in and fix, or you let go of something, or you're scared of something, and you're trying to get in there and see. And when we, if I were to text him, then the ego would have acted on the pain that's coming up. But instead, I didn't. And I had a hard time sleeping. It was so stupid. And then the next day, he had me on his podcast. And I walked in there, and he was like, Dude, I'm so sorry I had to leave. JJ Virgin had an event. And dude, it was so funny. Butter on my kid's head. It was unbelievable. I learned so much about myself just with that because I tormented my body and thought, did I do it wrong? And I sat with the pain and I didn't go on Facebook and I didn't turn on the TV. And it just sucked for a long time. And then before he said that, the next morning... It just went, <laughs> like, it was like I was on a, I was standing on a, a trap door that was like, stay, don't let the, and then it fell through, and I just felt my body, and I just felt here. And it's crazy to me that we're so scared to just be in silence with ourselves, that we're so scared to just feel that in silence, everything will come up. Because it should be normal for us to live like we can sit in silence. Like we were supposed to just be able to do that. And if we were doing that and got used to it, we would move from a place of universal principles versus societal principles. In universal principles, you always have enough. Let's look at a tree. It's always making apples. It doesn't need to have 10 million apples a year. It just needs to make apples. And it's never thinking, in, in universal principles, it's never thinking, how many apples will I sell? How many views do my apples get? There's already apple trees out there. What if people don't like apples? Maybe I'm more of a pear tree. Like, none of that shit <laughs> is said. And <laughs> if the apple tree didn't give its apples, what would have to happen? If it didn't do the thing it was here to do, it would have to get sick because it's not doing what it was universally designed to do. And if it got sick and felt out of alignment and didn't feel a connection to source because it wasn't doing what it's here to do, it would have to get addicted. There would have to be like Apple Tree Netflix and, and just crazy Apple Tree Facebook and distractions and just getting mad at nothing all the time for apple trees, they'd all just sit and gain weight. And, I hate this movie. <laughs> That's what apple trees would do. But apple trees weirdly always have just enough. And then they go through a phase where they don't have anything for a while because they have to not have anything. Like, if apple trees could always do it throughout the year, they might be exhausted. And we get this amazing winter to to relax, and, and it's not just winter in the season, it's just we should be taking time off. We should be relaxing, and people go, I'd love to just relax, but I have to make money. How much money do you think you're losing, even if you make $10,000 an hour, by not getting into source alignment? How much money does that cost? And why do you think you need so much? Why do we need so much money? Oh, okay, save it for later. Could you imagine if we thought that's how food works? Like, imagine if we thought the way food works is you go into a restaurant and eat as much food as possible now and then store it on your body, and then when you're 65 and you retire, you stop eating and let your body, like, start to <laughs> use up the fuel that you ate at Cheesecake Factory 40 years ago. You can also be financially abundant. Like, we think we need millions of dollars or millions of followers or whatever the millions are. But if you actually look, your body can't eat millions of plates of dinner today so that you can retire on food and then have it go. You, it's not universally aligned to constantly think you need more than you already have. It's societally aligned. The universe asks you, how much money do you need today? Some of you, if you have a bank account, can go, none. Some of you, if you have very little, 
could go, just this, I got enough for today. Some of you could go, uh, I don't have any, but if I go through the rest of the day, I only need 100 bucks for dinner and whatever, a cab ride, or whatever. We need very little. And weirdly, I need very little content each moment. Do you get what I mean by that? Like, I only need to say the word I'm thinking in the moment. Weirdly, because of that, there's a lot of content. But if I thought, I need to know the next 10 things that I'm going to say, it's going to all bottle up because I'm not just using what I have now, right here. Just say the thing. There's always a thing you're thinking. You're always thinking a thing. So you always have content forever, right at the edge of your soul. You start saying the thing you're thinking. It could be, I'm nervous. It could be, I don't get what's happening. And then you go deeper. It goes, oh, we've said that. You graduated through a layer. OK, I think I was nervous when I was a kid. My mom, blah, 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 blah. OK, cool, you graduated through that. Oh, I just feel love right now. And then it goes, here's some content. We're not here to be speakers so we can make a bunch of money and shift people in one way. We are here to shift the consciousness of the planet by shifting ourselves. Are you with me? This planet has been getting its ass kicked by societal thinking. Societal thinking includes, I own you and you own me. Or you owe me. It's weird how close those two words are. Owe and own. Right? What if you just love someone? What if you just love your partner? What if you just love someone and become a space of love so they choose to be with you? versus have to because we made a deal seven years ago. That's not societal, that's societally aligned. That's not universally aligned. The universe goes, man, I'm so thankful that I have this moment right now because we will never have this moment exactly this way again. I am so thankful to be with you right now. And when you listen to silence enough, you don't suddenly need to have more gratitude. All the parts of you that are blocking you leave and you start to realize I am gratitude. Like there's no work. You can't make yourself more thankful. You can listen to silence and then all the shit that's in the way of the infinite love and thankful that you are will leave and then you're just here. You're just here. This came from two hours of meditation a day for four years. Now, no part of me is saying, you have to do that. I'm not announcing a giant mission. But I do dare you a little more frequently, if you have nothing to do, to just continue to do nothing versus fill it with something. I dare you if that calls to you. It's up to you what you do. But I'm telling you, for me to sit in silence, and now that I've got to do, I, that's the most I can sit. If I, <laughs> I got to do six months of, of phone calls every single morning with a group at 6.30 AM, and some of them are here. And then, and, and it was amazing, and it changed my life. So every weekday morning, I got to wake up and do work and work with, on Zoom with, with 50 people for six months, almost every weekday. And then I was so in the pocket with it that I created a 7.30 group, and they just finished, and many of them were speakers here. And a lot of those, yeah, 7.30 group go do woo too, yeah. And I got to watch people shift. It was the most amazing thing. And today was an amazing graduation -y, amazing feeling in my body. But after that was done, I've got to finally be with me. Because one of our greatest last ditch addictions to stopping us from changing is getting other people to change. You know, we know that, that drugs are an addiction and we know alcohol is an addiction. And then it starts to become a little more gray area. We don't necessarily know that worrying is just as much of an addiction, or, or doubting, or judging, or just shitty self-talk, or, or holding on to something that doesn't serve you as an addiction. You can keep going up. And then eventually, there's things we get rewarded for that we don't see are an addiction, like a need to achieve something. Usually, if people go, I have to do this, not a calling half, but like, how do I get my customers? How do I get this I can feel? There's trauma under that. Every time someone goes, I should do this, or which way should I do this business, or whatever. Should implies there's a right or wrong way. And under that, I've never found it not be true that their fear is that if they do it the wrong way, something will happen that happened in their childhood. If I don't achieve this, then I'm worthless. And if I'm worthless, my dad will walk out on me again. That shit is running our businesses. 
right? If I don't achieve this, I'm not going to be enough. That shit's running our relationships and everything. We're sitting here hoping they don't abandon us because we were abandoned when we were five and don't want to feel it again. And that's not love. That shit we have to work on. We have to love it. And I find for me, for me to sit two hours, which I'm now forced to do because I'm not taking on other clients anymore. The only thing was this tour of me doing totally free work this week to feel a little more contrib contribution, to feel a little more flow. But other than that, I'm not doing things to get anymore. I'm very happy and I need to connect with me. And if I keep going, I need more happy. I need more achievement. I need more things. I need more love. Then I'm just a kid trying to get my mom's approval through audience members and I'm not going to meet the soul connection of what I am. So I had to let go and not coach for a while and now I wake up and sit and I collego with Dan and Carrie on my team an hour a day every morning and I sit and we collego this totally new way off to tell you about if you, for the people that know what collego is. But I sit and I listen and I can hear the thought and then I can hear the advice I would have given the thought to someone else, right? Like, oh, I feel this way. Okay, what would I have said to Wendy? What would I have said to Nicole in that that came up? Then I noticed that guy, that coach for that thought, is also not me. It's like, oh, you should do this. Oh, good point. What if you love it? Who's that? Then I sit here and go, what if you love the thought? That's suddenly, in the last week, I'm going, that's not me. I can't voluntarily, egoically love a fear. Do you get what I'm saying? You can't, oh, I'm going to love the fear. You can't do that. Because ego is going to love ego now. You got to sit and listen and wait till it's actually held by an energetic space that's beyond the story of what you think you are. It comes up. Oh, I feel so unseen in this thing. I feel so in love. Well, you should love that. Who said that? Who are you? Well, I'm the you should love that guy. That worked a couple years ago. That was the highest me. The more I listen, the more the you should love that guy coaches the other guy, and the more I actually see that was a great method two years ago, and it was a highest truth. But the way life works is every single day, it has new lessons for you, and you can't get too attached to anything that you learned yesterday. It was a method that you were needing to learn at that time. But life goes... I got a new way for you to learn things. Because if you just kept using that method, you'd make that method your God. You would say that's the way. And that's what every addiction is. Every addiction, am I going, am I going too deep for you? Is this weird? Awesome, you're into it? Because every single addiction is what happens when you feel really good and then you associate your feeling good to the thing that you were with at the time you felt good. I felt like shit here, and then I experienced this thing, and now I feel good. Alcohol is a great example of that. Netflix can be a great example of that. Falling in love can be a great example of that. I went on a date, I felt so good with this person, it was amazing, now they're the answer. Weirdly, many times the people we fall in love with the hardest are the ones we end up in the biggest fights with six months later. Why is that? Because they don't feel as good as they did then. Why is that? Because maybe they weren't the factor of why you became happy that night. Maybe it was that you were evolving. Maybe it was actually that you left a relationship that didn't align or had been single a long time and you promoted your soul by saying yes to something that felt new. And when you think that the thing outside of you is what made you happy, we make the mistake of going, that's my answer. Weirdly, when you're 21, if you've never drank, going to a, a bar actually is evolving, right? I'm graduating out of someone that never drank. So now I'm someone that drinks for the first time. So it's totally fun if you're having your 21st birthday, if you hadn't drank very much, to like have a party because it's celebrating you're evolving. When you're 50, it's a little different. When you're 50, you're not evolving past the person that was really happy when they were 21. So we keep being 21-year-olds when we're 50 and trying to find the happiness. And we do it with everything. And I want you to know, you might not be aware of this, but a new way is trying to birth right now for you that you don't understand. 
because if you understand it, that means something's trying to happen that you've seen before. The only way you could understand something is it's familiar based on what you've seen before. So we want shit you can't understand. We want stuff that's confusing because if you can understand it, you're attached to a way. And we want to break apart the way so that you can continue to evolve because that way is in the way of your evolution. Now, some people's voices might go, and it's not you, the voice that's been habitually located in your mind might go, so how do I evolve? Can you hear that voice? Listen past it. Just love it and listen past it. Like, be, by love it, I mean just be a space. Let it come up. How do I evolve? I don't know how to evolve. In fact, how do I evolve was your response to the real sentence, which is your fear. How do I evolve is your fixing of your fear. So instead of saying, how do I evolve, let's say the real thing that stemmed from, which is, I don't know how to evolve. If you can just say the vulnerable thing without an answer, I'm scared, I'm lost, then life can come in. But if you say, I got to do this, you're saying, life, I got it. I'm going to evolve. I'm going to evolve life. You can't do anything. I'm going to egoically do some shit that I think is evolving my egoic way. <laughs> you can't evolve without life. So we got to open up to questions versus answers. Shift everything to a question. Instead of saying, what do I want? Ask life, what do you want from me? What do you want from me? Can you feel how that your heart might even feel sadness there? Like we're so cocky to think we can do this without the moment. What do you want from me? What do you want from me? It goes, and usually it's answer B, just wait, listen. I don't believe, it really life is like, I don't believe you actually want the answer. So I'm gonna make you prove it by listening for a long time. Like, dedicate yourself to this silence and show me, show me that you actually want to know. So sometimes you have to listen for a while or days or just do something that you can feel would be blocking you, anything that you can feel that would be blocking you from listening. Throw it out. Right? I'm trying to listen to life, what you want from me. And then it goes, you want to know what I want from you? And then you go on to Netflix. You're not listening anymore. Imagine if you had the answer for someone and they go, what do you want from me? And then you don't say anything for two seconds, like, I'm good. And then they start playing Nintendo. You're like, I guess you don't give a shit that much. You don't care that much. And that's fine. You don't have to. You have the possibility of having joy and doing things your way. But remember, eventually life will go, are you ready? Are you having fun playing in your cage and ready to go? Are you ready? And when you do, you're going to go through things that not, might feel really good and also feel terrible. I feel a combination of fear and holy crap expansive. I feel, you notice you'll feel those within five minutes of each other sometimes. I feel like I'm going to die. I feel God. Like that's like a five minute span sometimes. And one of the tricks we have is when we feel really crappy, we trick ourselves into thinking it's going to be like this forever. We bring our mind into the pain and go, this feels like a wall that's so big, it's going to take me years to get over this. And meanwhile, you might be a minute away. When you go into the deepest work, it can be trauma, 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 freedom. Trauma, 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 freedom. And then it goes trauma. Try to use the old methods that I use to transcend this trauma. Weirdly, they don't work anymore because that was third grade and you're going into fourth grade. So then we have to throw that out along with the trauma. Freedom. All you are is freedom, but you have to receive it. The new book that I have coming out is called The Illusion of Money. And you can pre-order it, I just found out today. But it's called, it's so good. It's called The Illusion of Money, Why Chasing Money is Stopping You from Receiving It. Do you know how many times I've heard and how many people, how, how many times have you said this or heard someone say this? God, I work my ass off and I can't even get rent paid, right? And I'm going, don't you see that's the problem? 
I, I, I'd love to just live in my heart, Kyle, but I got to pay rent. And I'm like, yeah, the way you were doing it, where you were kicking ass every second, also wasn't working. So you want to try something new? I work so hard and I can't blah. Yeah, because guess what? In 2019, the consciousness of this planet is bigger than achieving stuff. And if you keep staying in the 80s consciousness that the highest consciousness in the 80s publicly was achieving, you're going to go down. See, we don't understand that our old story is always trying to go down. It's always trying to die. And if you let it die, you can be free. But if you see it going down like a plane and you're going, well, I've been in this plane for 10 years, I better stay on the plane, you're going to go down with the plane. To give you an example, I know someone very close to me who was diagnosed with cirrhosis, uh, cir 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 cirrhosis, sriracha of his liver. And uh, he, you know, he's told you need to eat better and you need to whatever. It's my dad. I'll just tell you that. It's my dad. And I don't know why I made him anonymous. He's not here. So, and they said, you need to eat better and you can live a lot longer and you can actually do a lot of things to really prolong this and everything. And then he goes out with my family and eats terribly. Why is that? Because his old story is wanting to stay alive more than the birth of what's trying to happen. I believe something that is totally controversial, but when a doctor diagnoses you with you have blah, blah, blah to live, many times, not always, they're saying your old story is what I'm talking about. Your old story has this long to live. So you can change your story, get out of your crappy situation, eat differently, move into a health-based thing, start meditating, fall in love with the old you so you can release it, and you're going to live a lot longer. But the old story you were is trying to die. And a ton of your old stories right now are trying to die really fast. That's what makes us depressed, is we keep attaching to the old story that's trying to die versus just become a space, let the depression come up, and love it. It's trying to die. Become a space for it. It wants to die. It wants to kill itself. Don't attach to it, or you're going to want to kill yourself. Just become a space for this chaos. And then one day, it'll just go bam, and you will cry and suddenly be a new story. And when I watch my dad eat all this old stuff, that is like he's keeping his old identity. I'm a meat eater. This is what I am. I'm a bread eater. I can do my dad so well. I called his wife. I called his wife. This is true. Like six months ago. And I, hey, it's me. Where are we eating tonight? And she answered it. So we're going to Azteca, dear. All right. Did we have sex last night? I forget. I forgot if we had. Well, you know we did, dear. Was I good? <laughs> I want you to take all the money out of my account and put it in Kyle's. He's an amazing son. Screw his brother. Let's get all the money to Kyle. Yes, dear, right away. I don't know why I make her so complacent in this story. But I did the first part. We didn't get into the sex stuff, but I just thought it'd be funny. But I watched my dad want to go down with his old story. Because if he just allowed himself to eat differently and cry things out a little bit, that story might be what's going to die. Can you see the difference? You have six months to live, you old story. And whether it's actually through medical telling you that, there are many stories you have that have about a month to live that you've been attached to could be a relationship story, an old career story, you know, where you live story, shit in the attic story, you know, an old belief system story. It has about, I don't know, some of you it has a week to live, some of you it has a couple weeks to live. You can tell based on how hard it's trying to die and you're constantly recessing this thing. Just constantly, constantly clear. It's like I'm dead. I suck this way. Everything sucked in this way. Let me die. Clear. Oh, God. You think you're your story. You're this moment. You're this space. That's you. You know when you feel those little callings and they expand you? That's you talking to the old story. You're not the old story. You're the calling. It's the old story that hears it and merges into the calling. What if we do this? That was Joe talking, that voice. 
That was true Joe. I mean, think about it. If your cells can change, and after whatever seven years, you're completely a different human being, there's no way that you're your body. Ten years ago, every part of your body was wall-to-wall -wall different. So you can't be your body. My body's been many different sizes, as some of you know. I had a five-year-old's body, then I got overweight, then really skinny, then overweight. Now I'm kind of middle, but slightly on the skinny side again, with a little fat. I'm keeping them all there. <laughs> but my body is not what I am. It's impossible. So when you say, I don't like my eyes, I don't like, what are you talking about? They're not you. They have nothing to do. When you don't like how you look, you're acting like you're the body. There's no way you're your beliefs because every belief has changed. Every belief you've had has changed. You one day believed one thing, then you believed another. You would vote for this type of person. Years later, you'd vote for this type of person. You know this is true, and then later you know this is true. So you're not your beliefs. So everything you believe right now is going to change. So don't even hold on to the belief. Everything you believe right now is going to change. And weirdly, no matter how many times your beliefs change, you're going to exist through all of it. So you're not your beliefs. Your old story can fall off and you'll still exist, so you're not your story. So our pain is a lack of awareness that tricks us into thinking that who we are is our old story. And that's the only thing stopping you. And that old story, I promise you, is stale, it's gross, it's stagnant, it's mildewy, it's gunk. I remember once that there was someone in my life that I had wanted to date for a long time. And then I got to date her, and I'll never forget, this is true, driving and having the sensation of, this is really real, ropes that were in, like in a swamp, like old gunky rope that looked like her wrapped around my body. I was driving and I just felt this thing, and it's not her, it was my story that I can't move forward unless I, and then it got, I got to date her and discover this thing where I was like pulling her off of me and freeing myself from this rope cage that wouldn't let me move forward with my soul until I experienced this thing that I had held on to for so long. Like, it's trying to free you. Those desires that you think you want when you're not listening to what life wants from you. Those are killing us. We used to Calego, do the Calego exercise. If you don't know what Calego is, we do this exercise where people would come up to my events and they would talk about their future as if it was past tense. And so we'd say, like, if we took this event, for instance, and pretended this event was a year ago, we'd say something like, I remember a year ago when I did that event, and from what I just said right now, I would say, so in the last year, after seeing Nicole and Joe and everyone do this amazing Love Wave event, it was amazing. I remember Joe did another one. It was amazing. I remember getting really healthier this last year and, and working out more and feeling good. That's how Calego works. But recently, I've been doing it every day with two teammates of mine who we created my company, Evolving Out Loud, together. And our Calegos have shifted from egoic desires to a declaration to the universe that we understand what it wants from us that day. It's a whole different game. I can't believe, I'm so excited you guys are with me this far. I'm like, I, cause this is some deep crazy stuff, but like I feel you guys into it and I feel our energies together. But the Calegos used to be like, so then we sold a million books and it was like, bah, 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 and then we sold the thing and then we did another event. It was so good and we did a stadium. Oh. And Oprah called, and Ellen called, and blah, 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 blah. Psst, neat. That's what your ego wants. But now our colleagues are like, I remember when I understood that this thing that was coming through needed me to hear it today. So I remember deciding after this colleague call to, to go into the woods and listen for an hour, maybe a couple hours. I remember just, just really listening and allowing and, and Dan on my team would be like, I, I remember realizing that the planet is actually a mirror of myself. And that as I just connect to the vibration versus try to get other people to connect to it, I saw a reflection of the world changing. And Carrie would say so many amazing things too. And 
after 40 minutes, every day at 40 minutes, reality shifts, everything expands, and our day is this new intention way of living in a universal nature-based way versus trying to have the number one. There's no more talk of the next book's a New York Times bestseller. There's no more talk of, it might come up every once in a while if it feels guided, but I don't give a shit. I don't care what other people do. I care what I do, and I know that by doing that, a byproduct is it will have a much bigger effect on what other people do. How many times have you felt a calling, and instead of living it, you posted it on Facebook that everyone else should do the calling, right? And sometimes I will have a guided thing and write it and then do it, but I can't tell you how many times I have written something that I was about to post and then deleted it. Because I was like, if I do this, I'll be more excited about how other people receive it and ignore that the fact that this calling was for me. This calling was for me. Every inspired idea you have is just for you. Everyone has different inspired ideas. So when we scream at everyone else that they should do an inspired idea that you have, they didn't have the inspired idea and they're not feeling the feeling, so it won't be sustainable, so they won't do it. A calling in you is an expansion of you. It's the death of your old story. It's the embodiment of the universe. It's a step closer on a percentage that's so much bigger than you would believe to us moving into universal principles, universal living. This silence around you, there's a, in, in, you know what, in societal principles, this is too much dead time. In universal principles, this is the most important thing. This sound that you're hearing is much more important than the egoic me that hopes you are proud of me or likes me or whatever. This thing right here, it is so here to take care of everything. And you will get back how much you listen to it. And most of us, 99% of the day, don't listen to it. And usually we'll listen to it when we're so called to mercy because of how much we listened to the shitty thing, how much we listened to the chaos. This sound, the silence. And can you hear not only the silence in the fan, but can you hear, can you hear the space beyond the silence? Are you with me right now? Can you, do you get what I'm talking about? Can you feel the space beyond this fan, beyond the silence? Can you hear that canvas that's holding all of this? It is so patient. And some of you are going to hear this and go, that felt good, and we're going to go back and do our habits. Some of you are going to change your habits after this. Remember, this talk isn't worth what you paid for it. It's worth what you do with it. This, this event, this whole day. And you could go, this event was the starting point of the true me and the death of everything that has been trying to die. Or you could go, that talk was really fun, and you get to go totally party and have fun until life goes, I'm going to kick your ass now because you're contributing to the societal way of hurting our trees and our planet and our animals and our babies and that baby. Those little, this won't hurt me, those little moments, this little thing I'm going to do and just go into a distraction and not listen to that calling, you don't know how many lives are changing based on those little one-second decisions. I'm not saying don't have fun. I'm not saying don't watch Netflix sometimes. I'm not saying that. But I just want you to know my daughter, Vivian, is going to grow up very differently based on those little decisions that you make. And she's going to have a really amazing planet if you decide to listen and befriend this silence. This silence has everything for you. And you will st start to listen and will start to clear out what's not you. And so it'll start out painful. It'll clear out what's not you. It'll detox you from a disease that's inside of you that says you are what you achieve. A disease inside of you that says you're not enough. All that crap that you learned from your parents that didn't know any better, that told you their thing. 
all those traumatic moments, if you listen to silence, it's going to take you past that pattern. It's going to, let's go past that childhood. Let's go past that story. Because you can directly connect to the silence of what you are, and it will throw up, sometimes literally throw up the old story. You will, you will find yourself bending over and crying. That is your old story actually leaving your eyes. Your old story. And you will become one with the silence. And your body will start to heal itself. It'll start to go, oh, we don't move based on all the crap we've watched on CNN. We move based on this silence. I'm in the car with a driver on the way uh, to another event, and he says, you know, on the news they're saying, and this explosion happened in this other country, and that there's these robbers everywhere, all this stuff, and I'm like driving down a street, seeing that every house is not on fire. Everything's fine. And that also is news. Like, everything's fine here. That also is news. This silence is here and it's trying to shift the consciousness of the planet, that also is news. Unfortunately, there's no good evening. The silence around you is trying to shift the consciousness of the planet. Jim, well, Bill, the silence is in this area right here. I'm outside where the silence is. Honk, honk. Oh, never mind. There's, now there's noise. But anyway, I'll go back to you. All right, everything's fine. All right. This is the Stevenson family. No one murdered them. This is the Jezebel family doing fantastic. Think of how calm you would be at the end of the news if it showed you the 99% incredible stories that were happening. I always think about that. I know this is an old bit of mine, but it's true. Like, do you know how not scared of flying we would be if they just showed us the 30,000 flights a day that made it? With the same breaking news, every time a plane takes off and lands, they should interrupt whatever crappy show you're watching and interview every single person as they're getting off the plane. Sir, how was it? He's like, it was fine, I had a nice time, this is Dolores. You'd be like, I wanna try flying. They're like, coming up, a family that wasn't murdered. Even murderers would be like, well, if no one else is killing people, why would I should start some company and fix the economy? They don't, there's a ton of news that is equally news. That you have, whatever, hair on your arms, that, that your heart is beating. Just so you know, your heart is beating. That's the real world. That's actually the real world. People say to me all the time, all your talk is great, Kyle, and I like that, and meditation's great. I did it in the 40s. But let me tell you something. I'm realistic. <laughs> I'm realistic, and it's not that easy, Kyle. I'm realistic, it's not that easy. Realistic, realistic man. It's not that easy, Kyle. Because I have to pay rent. I have to pay rent. Let me tell you, here's what the real world is. The real world is that they claim that, that they're in. I just realized I did that. Do you know that? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know that happened. <laughs> I was so sincerely annoyed with those people that I forgot I was on stage. That was a real, like, oh, hey, sorry. Because I hear this, sh oh, God, well, you got to be realistic. It's not, we got to be practical and responsible on a bunch of words that aren't true. <sighs> ah! They said, realistic, the real world is when people sit in their chair at their house and then put on a TV, and the TV shows you a fantasy of all the things that could go wrong. And then you sit in your couch and come up with all the ways things could go wrong without at all acknowledging that you've never died yet worried about dying thanks to the news for the last 30, 40, 50 years. That's the real world where you sit and go, what if Trump nukes us? The real world, what if the economy crashes? It's so real, I'm sitting here fine, and in the future, creating a scenario that is total fantasy. The most delusional people call themselves realistic. 
That is the most delusional world. The real world is what's true now. What's true right now? Right? What's true right now? Let's talk about what's true right now. Joe birthed an event out of thin air that we are sitting inside of Joe's idea. That is the real world. Isn't that crazy? We are sitting inside of Joe's idea. Isn't that nuts? That's realistic. Your heart's beating right now. You have a grillion organs and blood and all kinds of crap doing stuff that we have no idea of. It's bizarre how much complication there is and how we're at all still alive because just one little paint done and we're still fine. That's realistic. You have hair growing and dying while it's growing. Isn't that the most crazy thing you've ever heard in your life? And we take dead shit on our head. And, ooh, what about this way? Aren't I a beautiful model with my dead on my head? Look at dead on my head. I want to style my death. Mm. Ooh, could you paint my death? I have five deaths right here. Let me get a death a cure. That's the real world. <laughs> That's actually real. You have skin cells. This is realistic. You have skin cells. You're sitting in a chair that someone designed in a room someone else built. That's realistic. You're amazing. You're alive. You're perfect. You're beautiful. You're love. You're enough. This is the real world. And it's up to you when this talk is done if you're going to focus on the real world or go back to the delusional bullshit world. I'm ready, I'm ready to live, at least on a higher percentage, in the real world with you. I need some co-creators. You need some co-creators. Our kids are too special. Our, our kids in the future, the animals, the poor animals that are just so second to us and we just don't give a shit about. The rivers, the ocean, fish in the ocean, it's very easy to change this planet. Just say yes to this moment. And you will change you, and you will see that the planet will wall-to-wall -wall mirror your change. You guys, thank you for being with me. I love you. It's been an honor to be with you. Thank you so much. I love you. You're me. So you had a great set. You had a great performance. Good job. You're me. I love you. Thank you, everybody. My pants are falling down because they always are.